Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids147. Happy 14th of June, everybody. Um, I hope you're having an amazing day. So, let's have a look. Where's my phone? I'm organised but not organised today. So let me just pull up the Tiny Decisions app and let's find out which one we are starting with it is extremely muggy today. We're on number 18. Okay, the layout that I have, we're going to fill a gap. So I think I'm still going to clip the canvas just because it helps it bring it down to a little bit more manageable level. And we're going to we're going to fill in the block in the middle. It's very weird how, how this decision app, I know it does depend on how you've gridded it out and uh, somebody working on a painting the opposite way can have a different effect. But when I've been doing my custom ones that are 50 by 60, I think I had ones where it did everything apart from her eyes and mouth. And then the next time it's done a big block in the middle and then left me the green. It makes it more fun. So let me pull out the N. Now today's pen is one of these acrylic ones and this one is from FG Normal. It was sent to me as part of an unboxing. So I will be sure to pop the link down below for that one. Um, pretty good price on, on acrylic pens. Um, they're not quite the same, they don't feel as heavy or as solid, I suppose it is, as, as the ones you can get made for you, but they're a nice way to treat yourself to a prettier pen. Now, I do have an everlasting tip in this pen as well. I got quite a few, and I think I've... I've put one in most of my acrylic pens that they will fit in. I've got one form or another of the everlasting tips. It's just the straighteners, I don't have as many. So this one's got a plastic straightener, but that can be quite handy when it comes to the likes of this square especially the likes of the fact that I just put that in the wrong place. What have I just managed to... Oh, I've just lost my stopper. I was like, what have I managed to knock? It's my stopper out my tray. Let me put that back there because that could cause me some problems when I'm ready to tip this colour back into its pot because I always tip before... And taking the stopper out and before putting it over the top of my container. And yeah, I would have completely forgotten that the stopper wasn't in there by the time I get to the end of the colour. And therefore I probably would have made an almighty mess. And managed to tip diamonds everywhere while trying to shake them into the spout. So we'll put that safely back in. I've only got a few, oh, we have got one up. I've just spotted that there's only one up here. So I'm just gonna deviate from my plan of going up these branches and put it there before I forget. But I hope you all had a lovely weekend. I know we're on to Monday now, the working week for many. Uh, any of those that are in the UK, it has, well, I know in my area it's been really, really warm, but quite cloudy. Yesterday, the last day of the weekend, is rather muggy. And it looks like we're down for more of the same this Monday. Because, of course, I'm filming this beforehand. We'll see. Hopefully, I'm hoping the air will clear a little bit. I don't like it quite being as muggy as it is. So let's have a look at what questions we have for today. 
you get all the way to the oldest one that I've not yet answered. And let's see if I can see how many of these I can get through. Let me just finish up this colour and then I will zoom in. And that means then that I can move my computer next to me and I can read the questions a little bit easier. Okay, that's N. And that is the exact reason why I needed to make sure that the stopper was back in because I just tip them straight into the spout as soon as I've finished. It also means that I can keep a second glance around the painting and if I find that I've missed one and I've already tipped them into the spout, I can tip them back out again to get the one that I've missed. It's like a, a little bit of a second chance for me. <coughs> so let me zoom you guys in. Work on this little middle block. We've got quite a bit of the branch here. I do have my little wax pen handy for doing any ABs that we come across. But let me just have a look. Oh, so Regina has said she does, she uses regular glue dots in her pen and cuts them into four pieces. And she dabs it on her clothes so that it will, um, so it loses a little bit of the stickiness. And she says when she when it loses its stick, she pulls it out of the tip and stretches it and folds it over on itself. So in effect, what that'll be doing is just getting a different part of this of the sticky dot to the front. She can normally do an entire diamond painting on one piece of, of glue dot and she does large ones. So that's good to know. Erin uh, said, if you ever tried Tre Treasure Studio Arts, they have a thing that they call mounting film as their glue. Um, I do, I have done an unboxing on one. I have unboxed one and it is, it is here in my stash. I've not yet done it though. As soon as it does get to the point of me doing it, I will let you guys know what my thoughts are, but I haven't got there yet. Leslie says, thanks for the daily chats, and she owns all the JD Rob books. Good on you. I do love the JD Rob series. I love it when a new one comes out. Um, and then, oh, so Brandy says she's loving the videos, and do I have any suggestions for working on a large painting with a little room to paint. Her canvas is a custom of 80 by 120 and she struggles to work on it because of the space. Yes, there's a few different things you can do. I do have a video on my website, um, which is 4kids147.com. Under videos and tips and tricks, I do show you how I work on a larger canvas in a small space. Also in the video section under my craft room, I do also actually show you my workspace in the conservatory where I sit and do my diamond painting. And I'm pretty sure I have a large one set up at that time. I've got a fly in this room, so I do apologize if it decides to Whiz across in front of the camera. I'm sure it will just annoy me for a while. Um, so yeah, I do have a video on that. But what I do suggest is the likes of pipe lagging or a pull noodle. If you wrap your diamond painting round that. So the part that you've not worked on, you can normally wrap it either way. I tend to go with quite often with the way it came to me. So if you got it and it was wrapped inwards, then I tend to keep it wrapped that way. 
and then the part that you've done you need to make sure that that wraps outwards and it's actually really easy or I find it quite easy to work on a big painting when I have an easel because I find that one section of it tucks round the back of the easel and the other section just sits in the front of it and I find that works really really well but that is in the video as well pipe plugging will be your friend oh somebody's asking so there is a comment oh hang on no it's on a different one sorry <laughs> I've just had a look, there was a question, somebody asking about the refills for the Xyron Maker in the UK and where you can get them from, but it was actually asked on a video that's not one of the whip and chats. It's actually asked, if anybody is able to answer it for her, it is asked on my Diamond Painting Breakdown, which is part two rounds, if anybody's able to um, help, help her out. I don't know if she's watched this video or not, so I will try and reply if I find an answer for them. Crazy Cat Lady says she's really enjoying the June Waffle. Oh, I am so glad. I do, I do love the fact that there's people all over the world joining in, doing a little bit of diamond painting along with me. Um, have you considered doing a stackable version of your trays? Possibly we did look into, you know, making the, the bottom of our trays a little bit smaller so that they would sit inside each other and therefore could be standalone or become stackable. But the, the quality that they printed was just not as good as we wanted, which is why that design didn't, you know, turn into the, the final design for the tray. It's something we may look at in the future now we've learned you know more about the printers and we've learned their little quirks and what they like and what they don't like. It's like with anything the more you do it the more you become a master. We're nowhere near at master level but we're definitely getting better. So maybe we will have a look and see, revisit it at some point. But at the moment, we weren't happy with the print quality for a stackable tray. And it, it was mainly the bottom that didn't have the good print quality. But we want the whole thing to feel, feel premium. That's what it is. We want the whole thing to feel just that little premium level and it just didn't have it for us but if we can in in the future we will um, Susan says hi from Canada hello hello Canada um, she does hope that I'll put a video up with my experience with glue dots I will I definitely will um, she tried dental wax this week. She found it in a medicine cabinet from when her kids had braces. Yeah, I've probably got some as well. She says that she does find that different waxes work differently when the weather humidity changes. And she asked whether I do. I've not major noticed it. However, in the UK, apart from today and a very very few days over the summer where the humidity is is quite unbearable we don't tend to have that huge a change i would say definitely not i know when you when you can go abroad there's that different type of heat there's that sticky heat which is what we've really experienced today it's quite it's, it's really high temperature but it's not with clear skies and with the sun it's, it's sticky heat today but we don't get that that often for me to really notice if it's made a difference I mean I do feel that my wax has been a bit worse in some instances doing this whip and chat but I do also think that that has something to do with the drills 
Um, and this is the wax is stored in quite a cool room in in regards to it doesn't get direct sunlight and stuff so it doesn't get as muggy but it would not surprise me if wax does react differently to humidity especially if there is extreme differences i reckon that would that would definitely be noticed just trying to get this i managed to pick up a diamond but it's the wrong way up I only need a few letter wise and I probably would have been a lot quicker tipping them into my tray and I say that every single time let me just do it let me stop trying to fight with them and do it the easy way it's always worth a try though because if it works it is quicker it's just when it doesn't. So I've got those two done. I think I'm going to do these other dark colours that form the sections, even though my next letter is technically X. Oh, somebody else from Canada. And she recently discovered that a holiday that they celebrate their Victoria Day isn't celebrated outside Canada. She assumed it was a British import, quite possibly. What holidays does the UK celebrate that are probably not celebrated elsewhere? Ooh, that's a hard one because we do have like different saints days for each country as in when I say each country I mean as in England, Scotland, Wales and I think I think Northern Ireland have their own saints though I'm not sure on that one um so a bit like you know like St George's Day and St David's Day but Oh, I don't think we don't particularly celebrate them as a holiday. I think the only time we really get one that is, I mean, we get bank holidays. Don't get me wrong. We have two in May. We have one in August. We have Easter and then we have ones around Christmas. I think Boxing Day isn't something that's celebrated everywhere. So that's the day after Christmas. We have a Boxing Day bank holiday. I don't think that's everywhere in the world, but I am pretty sure that is in other countries. Apart from that, we don't tend to get more unless it's for something to do with the royals. So I think we get an extra bank holiday next year due to how long the Queen has rained I think or is it I'm pretty sure it's how long um she's been on the throne and we did get a holiday for the royal wedding I think so we get the odd extra but to be honest there'll be other countries that will do that as well that won't be a UK exclusive thing I can't think of one that is a particular UK exclusive. Um, but I may be wrong. <laughs> I may just not realise that it is exclusive to the UK. A bit like you finding out that um, your Victoria Day is, is only in Canada. It may well be that we have one. And I and I don't I don't realise it. So Susan has said she finished her fox a little bit early. Uh, she finished in 10 days, but she couldn't help it. <laughs> she is going to move over to her ever moment so she can finish up the month. I like that. You will end the month with two done. Even better, especially if it's one that you've parked on as well. Um... Oh, and she does say that she uses the mini glue dots, not micro. I do have some 
um, I do have some glue dots so maybe I will just give it a go with with the ones that I have and see how that works and if I find I need smaller ones then I can always you know order some or nip out to the likes of Hobbycraft and pick some up and then finish doing my video and it still all be one video. So I'll make sure that I get on that um, as soon as sort of June Waffle series is done. I'll, I'll be sure to make that a, a priority video, if not for you guys, also for me, because I do want to give it a go. And this wax is struggling to pick up some diamonds. It is a new pen tip. This hadn't been, since I've put the new tip on this pen, I haven't used it. So it may be that it's just because it's a new pen. And that seems to be happening a lot. I'm using quite a few of the pens I have changed the tips in. When I got all the new Ever uh, Everlasting tips in their January sale and I think quite a few of those are have not been used since I topped them up so I think that's why I have to keep filling up with wax as well <coughs> hello Queen crafting said not all multi places are created equal that does not surprise me I think there's many things that we think that are all the same and it turns out that they're actually not. She found that the skinnier opaque places, which come in 4, 7 and 10, are easier to use than the thicker translucent or transparent ones, which are 3, 6 and 9. Okay, so if you tried the thicker ones and didn't enjoy them, but I wanted to try them all to places again, try the thinner one. And also the quality of the drills and the canvas can play a role. So if, you, if anybody is wanting to try multi-placing, I think I'm, I'm quite happy single placing. To be honest, multi-placing while I've tried it, it it's never been something I've, I've ever tried more than two minutes so therefore I don't think I'm really wanting to master it if I can't try it for any longer than that um, but if there is anybody that is wanting to try multi-placing then the ones that are four seven and ten are better and also try with a higher quality canvas and drills when you're first trying it and see if that works for you. I thought I had quite a few different M1s to put in. I don't know, maybe I do. I think a lot of them are E's now though. E's and K's. This is why sometimes I feel like I need to fill in all the smaller ones because otherwise I, I get lost. I've already missed a Y at the top that I've not filled in. So let me fill that in. I've just filled up my wax, so that should be an ideal time to dip my pen into the pot to pick it up. Let's get E. Save my memory card. So D Jan says she also finds the live videos very distracting yeah I can see how it can happen for people that are doing them because I do find sometimes I go quiet even on these these videos where I'm pre-recording I find that I can go quiet and it's like oh yeah and I need to actually read the question out so people know and I can imagine if questions are flying past in, in a chat that's potentially busy by the time you've read it it could have gone and therefore if it's one that you realize you need to answer and read back 
I can see how it could have just disappeared from view and you have to you know try and make sure that you're answering it as well as letting people know what's been asked so I can imagine it's hard from both sides and then people can get upset when their questions aren't answered as well which I, I do understand that's why I quite like these these long or these longer whip and chats or the you know the events because then if I don't get to your question today I might get to your question tomorrow so I'm always answering people's questions from the oldest so the oldest that was asked and I work my way up based on when YouTube told me it was asked and it can vary from video to video so sometimes it might be so I did answer a question from the 10th of June's video and then I answered one from the 9th and then I'm going back to the 10th it depends where people are up to on their watching as to which one they're answering asking the question on so I do try and get everybody's so Anna has asked is there a way of putting our name on a list or something for being notified of when the colours of tray are interested in are, are available. So this is something that we're working on, not in relation to being on a list, but we are having a very, very slight rebrand, which I have fully announced on the Facebook page, but I haven't yet talked about it hugely on YouTube only because it is coming um, it's coming we're having a rebrand or a slight rebrand on the 1st of July and I wanted to be able to make sure to let you guys know that it's coming and that we've got exciting things coming up but without it being too far away um, but part of that is we will be launching sort of a Facebook business page that will have more of the notifications about shop things. So things will still be put up on YouTube at times and there may well be questions asked on the Facebook group, but we're gonna try and keep all the announcements off the Facebook group and onto the Facebook page instead because we don't want it to feel as though that's all that the group's about. We want to be able to, you know, have have more open topic conversations and all that sort of stuff on the group and therefore the business page will help that. So we will have, you know, links to to everything that we can will be available on the website soon and it's not going to change the sort of things that I do so I'm still going to be for the month of July I'm still going to be uploading pretty much daily with the, the same sort of content that I've already had and then come August there's going to be a slight change, but not a big change. Um, I'm actually going to be launching a second YouTube channel where I'm going to do primarily at the moment quite a few unboxings. There will still be the odd one on this channel, but they won't be quite as frequent. I want to bring a few different things to this channel. But I do know that people still like the unboxings. So this will give me the opportunity to potentially bring you a few more without it all feeling as though that's all you're seeing from me each day. And I don't want that. I want the variety. So yeah, there is, there is new things are coming. The Facebook page will be where we will announce any new products and any new colours. Um, and... It, I think it just, it really does depend on the colour to how high the demand can be sometimes. But we are hoping to be able to keep up with the demand for all colours. 
And if it does happen to be that, that the same colours are selling out within the same sort of time frame, no matter what the colour is, then it may be that we increase how many we print of the limited colours before they go up to, to hopefully give everybody a chance to get one. We're just going to have to see how the next few months go and how the next few colours go to see whether it was just a purple thing that made it go quick or whether it was the fact of it being any any particular limited colour. We'll sort of have to play that by ear a little bit. But purple will come around again. It's just not going to be around again for a bit because we've had a lot of requests. Um, we may also look as well as part of the sort of rebranding and the Facebook page and all that sort of stuff. Then we may also look at the likes of a mailing list, an email mailing list, but that is something in the future. We've got quite a few things that are in the works and things we want to set up first before we look at, you know, being able to sign up for a newsletter that will notify you of, of something coming out because a newsletter takes a little bit more work to make sure that it is right and formatted right and contains, you know, all the information that you need compared to maybe a Facebook post that lets you know a tray's gone live and then just point you to the listing. Can't quite do that the same in an email. Not and look professional anyway. <laughs> I think that's that's why social media um, can play a big part for businesses, is it can just be that little bit quicker. And anybody who has ever run a business, especially if they've ever run a business alongside working full time, they know that that time is the one thing that you fight against constantly. It's a constant battle and struggle to be able to get things done in, in the time frame that you want and to find the time to do it. But that will be a soon. <coughs> Edward has said, if you like JD Robb, then you should try reading Janet Ivanovich, Ivanovich. Um, she says, thank you for everything you and your family have done for this hobby. If you're changing the name of the business, how are you going to fit the name on the trays? Well, we are working on how to make sure that we fit it on the trays. But for those that haven't seen the Facebook post, um, what we, we are still keeping the four kids at 147 in part on YouTube because it is still very much how I have been known or how I am known but our new company name is Add More Zest that's the business name so we are still going to have Add More Zest with four kids at 147 but the website will change to show add more zest more so than the four kids. The products will still be there. The products will still be the same. There will be, of course, a slight changeover, for example, on the stickers. There'll be a quite, there might be, you know, the odd item that's still branded for kids at 147 until it changes over. But that branding is something that when you finish with the sticker sheet, it goes in the bin anyway. Um, it's just it's just our name on the bottom of the sticker sheet. But for the trays, we do have a couple of ideas of how they can be brought into the trays in a slightly different way. But it will still be there. So if you do want a tray that says... The four kids at 147, which I'm not sure. Let me tip it upright. This is where I lose all my diamonds, and I'm not sure if it's focusing because I'm zoomed in. Uh, but it does have four kids at 147 on the back. 
um, those trays will be available until the 30th of June and then it will just change to be add more zest but the design and the shape of the tray and how they work is not going to be changing so just to note that one you'll know when it's changed because the image on the website will have changed but yeah we're very excited um, we like we like the idea of the new name there's you know there's a few different variations so you can add more zest with four kids at 147 diamond painting and then as I say I will be launching a second YouTube channel which will launch I'm hoping to launch that on the 1st of August so if you are interested in even more diamond painting videos starting off as primarily unboxings but things may change and evolve as time goes on then the channel's name is add more zest with diamonds do please get yourself subscribed and turn on the notification button so that you will get notified as soon as the first video goes up and my hope is that across both channels there may not be a video uploaded on each channel every day but I am hoping that between the two of them you will actually get more videos in a week so sometimes I will upload on both channels and sometimes it will be on one channel but not on the other and I'm hoping that there's a few more little mini series that I can bring you maybe even you know a shorter mini series rather than being a 45 minute whip and chat like these ones seem to be i can't keep that up all year but i am planning on bringing more whip and chats to to this channel more of a regular whip and chat without you know missing a whip and chat one week because i've got something else that i want to show you or another video that i've managed to film that's a you know a little bit different or not on the you know not a, an unboxing or a preparation video um, it means that i can do more a few things that are regular and then mix up the things that aren't regular items um, and yeah it'll take the pressure off a little bit in relation to to some types of videos and yeah i'm hoping it'll work out for everybody and you guys will actually get more content out of it if you do watch every type of video that i do so head over to add more zest with diamonds it doesn't have well at the time of me making this video it doesn't have any subscribers because i haven't actually told anybody about the youtube channel yet i'm not expecting to upload anything earliest will be the first of august but i do hope to have a very big and different item to share with you on the 1st of August. So do make sure that you get subscribed and turn your bell notifications on so that you're ready for that. The earlier you do it, the easier it'll be. <laughs> Just do it while you remember. Um, but yeah, we are still, we, we should still be able to fit the name on the trays. We're just thinking of a different way of fitting them on. We just need to check that everything looks good and works well before we go ahead with it. But yeah, exciting times. There's all sorts of things that we do have in the works that we, we're hoping to bring in over time and just, you know, bring you guys more content, more items. Yeah, fun times. 
Uh, Corey Renshaw says, what is the blue pen that you're using today? And she asked that on the 10th of June. I think that was the Stabilo pen. That was gifted to me. A Stabilo pen is a normal, well, originally it was a normal writing pen that you could buy in a shop. But the end, the end of the pen had been taken out and replaced with a diamond painting pen tip. But they're, they're pens that are really comfy to hold. I do have the name of it. I'm pretty, or did I put the name of it? No, I'm not sure if I did actually. So it's S-T-A-B-I-L-O. If you search for a Stabilo pen, it is one that is made to more fit in between your fingers and the way you hold a pen. And then it was converted for me by um, Melissa, if I remember rightly. As I've said before, I'm rubbish with names. Apologies if it wasn't. And yeah, she converted it into a pen for me. And it's very comfy to hold. Um, what is your favourite movie? Hers is Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeves. Favourite movie? Mm, there is a few that I like. The one that will make me cry every time is Stepmum. Every single time it gets me. Probably Top Gun as well. It's probably another one that gets me. I'm just checking my symbols now because all I actually have left, they're all ABs. So I'm going to get my two little white ones first so I don't forget them because I do only need two ABs for this one. No glow in the dark because they're individual ones. <coughs> I think my ABs might last. We'll see how we go. And then I'm actually going to do Z first because I have three down here that I don't want to miss. Whereas I'm not going to miss that big neon section there. Um, so yeah, Stepmom, Top Gun, probably the older ones. Um, Armageddon is another good film. No, that's a long one. You sort of have to be in the mood. I think they're probably what would be classed as my favourites. Sarah Bull said, are you going to be doing one for July as well? I'm not doing a whip and chat a day for July. I know that much. <laughs> it definitely uh, takes it out of me, making sure that I uh, do a video every night ready for the next day. It's very time consuming doing a daily whip and chat, but I'll be doing diamond paintings for July, though I probably won't break it up in the point of doing one section a day. Maybe I should though, maybe that would be what would help me to get finished quicker. And look, I started doing those ABs and I've just remembered I forgot these three, which was the reason that I started doing this one in the first place. Um, Zoe Archer said the glue dots are fantastic, she can go days without changing it out. You're, you've sold it to me people, everybody has sold to me the glue dots. They will be tried as soon as possible. Uh, Mobs the Top says she appreciated it when I googled Morrison's for you. You're more than welcome. I know what it can be like sometimes trying to google a specific item when you're in a country, a different country. It's very hard to find out answers for something for a different country when you're using Google in your own country. I, I understand that with work because I deal with um, Irish, Irish customers for my work. Quite often if I need to Google something, even trying to find something out and put in Ireland at the end, can't always find me the answer that I need um, and you definitely get different search results depending on what country you're in 
which I understand why, because quite often you would be searching for something in your own country. But I also know it can happen um, with, with Australia. So sometimes I will, you know, start Googling stuff at home of places I may want to go or something I may want to get while I'm in Australia. And sometimes it just it just will not give me the type of search results I'm expecting. And it will mix in the UK to it far too much. Whereas if I just wait until I get to Australia and I'm on, you know, my parents' Wi-Fi or even a network signal if I get an Australian SIM card. Completely different set of results and it gives me what I want. So you're more than welcome. She does say, may I comment truthfully regarding the timings for us Australians? So she is, is in Australia herself and New Zealand. <coughs> she says, surely in this day and age of technology, they could just wait a few hours until my video and stuff comes up. I do get that completely. I do get what you're saying. My only defence for the Australians and New Zealand people that do um, follow the, the symbols that I use, not one of them asked me to put a Facebook post up the day before, letting them know the number square that I was doing on that particular day. None of them asked me to. It was only when I spotted somebody saying, you know, here's my first one, it's the second for me today, in no way implying that I should do it, that I realised and, and twigged that actually they are a day ahead and it was me that chose to make, it was me that chose to ensure that I put that post up and told them which square it was because I wanted them to have the option to go along at the same time. None of them asked for it and that there was a day that I completely forgot to put the post up on Facebook, letting the Australians know what section of, of the video was going to be, and not one of them complained. So they are very accommodating for the fact that I am in a different time zone, and I hugely appreciate that. But yeah, it, it wasn't them asking, it was me putting that on myself because I want to be able to include or for anybody that wants to join in, I want them to be able to join in as much as possible. But I can assure you, I didn't get anybody moaning at me. I moaned at myself. <laughs> um, Clara says she's loving the tune Whip and Waffle. Keep what you're doing, Rebecca, Megan and Mr. Falkis. Thank you. We will keep we will keep plodding on. Oh, Fee managed to get a purple tray. She said she's just ordered her first tray. Uh, they're all mainly pink and purple. So she got her first tray as a purple one. Well, I do hope you enjoy it. Most of them are winging their way. The only ones that aren't quite winging their way are waiting for a different colour tray to be printed. But they're all allocated. They are all saved. Um, but quite a few people ordered white and or pink trays with the purple ones, which I understand it's been a, a recently new colour. And for shipment purposes, it's a lot better to order them all together. But in turn, the white ones that I had on the shelf disappeared very quickly. So I need to have a couple more days of catching up on printing those. But anybody that's not had a dispatch notification for their purple tray but did order one, please be assured it is 
And this must be a bigger square today because it's saved again. But yeah, be assured that everybody who ordered a purple tray does have one. <laughs> Jess says she stopped diamond painting straight away and went to the site to order a purple. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you came back, Jess. I hope you came back. Um, Judy's also said she can't wait for the pastels, yellow and blue. Um, hopefully she can order by batch. Hopefully you can. We are hoping to get to the point that the limited edition colours may stay there for a little bit longer and give you the option of, of purchasing a couple at a time. We don't like the shipping charges any more than you guys do, which is which is why we only do them at cost and we don't. Apart from an, the first level of postage, which is an extremely smaller level of postage, there is a very small packing charge on that because it's a small order. As soon as you get up to the next postage bracket, we don't charge any extra than what the actual postage is. Um, because we, we get that postage can be way too high in some instances. Um, Joanne says, and it was Joanne who finished her heaven and earth design of her little dreamer's tree. Absolute trooper she was with it. I did, I did double check the Facebook post after reading her comment. But she does say thank you for answering my question. She's going to try the stretcher bars. Yeah, I think they are probably the most cost effective without it, it going to an extreme level. But if you do find that the stretcher bars work, but don't quite give you the finish you want, however you love that piece of art where it is, then I would potentially make the investment to frame it and look after it that bit more because your worth is your work that you put into that painting is worth it. Um, but stretch bars will be a very good way to find out if if it works and it may end up looking just as amazing as framing it to be honest. I've seen some I've seen some work put onto stretcher bars and it looks really, really good. Um, Jean says, how do you encourage yourself if you don't feel like diamond painting? Um, more often than not, if, if, if I don't feel like diamond painting, quite often I will, I will force myself in regards to a video. So sometimes that is the way that it's like, go on, get moving. And once I get going, I love it. Otherwise, I mean, I wouldn't fully force yourself if you're really, really not enjoying it. However, if when you say, if you don't feel like diamond painting, but you want to feel like diamond painting, so maybe, you know, a day where you're just purely exhausted or, you know, maybe you've had a really rubbish day and part of you wants to diamond paint and part of you can't get going with diamond painting and it's more that sort of feeling, then for that, quite often, I will I will get the diamond painting out if it, if it's something that's not out already. So I will get it sort of set up and I will just be doing, you know, 10 minutes or, or one colour, you know, and it, it's just a matter, I'm just doing one colour, that's fine. And then I'll feel as though I've made some progress. And quite often by, by the time I've just done that one colour, I'm actually really in the mood for doing more. And it was the thought of getting it out and getting it set up that actually turned me off, not the actual diamond paint itself. 
So maybe just set yourself a mini challenge of, in this section, I'm just gonna do one color or I'm just gonna do one row, or whatever it may be, something small. And if you find that once you have done that, you don't want to do any more, then don't. It's not something that you have to do come hell or high water. You do, you know, it's better to enjoy it pretty much each and every time you do it than to force yourself every time. Because if you begin to force yourself every time, then you just don't like it. We all know those things as a child that we were forced to do that as adults we now hate because we were forced every day. Don't let diamond painting be one of them. Uh, but yeah, to just if it's just a little bit of a gentle nudge, then just tell yourself you're doing a small amount and see how it goes after that. Oh, so we have a very big section of the tree done here. That wax pen did seem to leave a few more remnants this time of wax, but it is clear wax. And if need be, I'll just run a little bit of, of blue tack over the top when I'm done and it'll pull all those out. But more often than not, it'll dry out over time and fall off when I brush it. But we have the base of a tree. We are still all connected. We have pretty much most of the edges left to do. But we're nearly halfway. Nearly. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Um, I hope you're enjoying working on your paintings. Small bit at a time. Just a, a little bit each time and we'll get there. But thank you so much for joining me today and I'll speak to you all again tomorrow.